Hey, I am Scott, and I am an American in uh, Bangkok. Cock, cock, cock. Yeah, I'm in Bangkok, and I want to leave. I want to go somewhere. I'm ready to get the fungulo out of here. Go somewhere. I don't care if it's for a three-day weekend, but I just want to get out of time, man. I want. I like to be traveling. I am. What can I say, man? You know. It's uh, it's something that I enjoy, and uh, I feel like if I don't have a camera in my hand and I'm not sitting in a hotel getting ready to go take some photos, for some reason I feel like uh, I'm not not alive 100%, you know? I mean, uh, when I'm out there, like my trip to Nepal, I felt, I felt alive. I felt like, hey, man, this is what it's all about. So, uh, you know, I got some, I got some stuff planned. But I wanted to, to talk about something, and it's useful. It's not just entertaining, it will be useful. Uh, but before, before I say that, this podcast is brought to you by High Speed Thai, highspeedthai.com. If you want to learn how to read, write, and speak Thai, that's where you can do it, and it's very. It makes it very easy. Their videos, their programs, their uh, their uh, information, the way that it's all set up, makes it very easy for you to learn. And I know because I have checked it out. It's quite good. I admit it. Uh, I even learned a few things real quick. Uh, you know, it was like I just looked at stuff. I was like, wow, they they make it really easy. You know, if, if you apply yourself just a little bit, you'll learn uh, at least the basics. You apply yourself more, you'll learn even more. You go to their website, you enter the referral code AIB, or you just go to my website, and uh, you click on the button, it'll take you to a page, uh, or I'll have the link down below, and that's all you got to do. Click on it, boom, you go to their, uh, to their website, and then I earn a small fee, small commission, which helps me. So you're helping yourself. You're helping their company, and you're helping me. It's a win-win, baby. Uh, also, listen, i got to plug my book. It's just what i got to do. They call me Farang, and that's what they do call me. Uh, I've been saying this, uh, and I think that, you know, hopefully it'll catch on, because I, I really believe it. Uh, the book is uh, it's good material to read on the shitter. Uh, you know, i got a buddy who lives out in Korea. He's an American guy. And a uh, very nice guy, and he read a bunch of my stuff, and he said, you know, you write just like Charles Bukowski. I said, who the hell is Charles Bukowski? I never heard of him. Actually, I'd heard of him, but I thought he was a mass murderer. I, I was thinking of somebody else for some reason, and I thought he was a murderer, and I just didn't ever look into it. But he actually was a uh, prolific uh, poet and short story author, and uh, he wrote six novels. So I purchased all of the all six of his novels, and I went through all of them in a matter of about a month. I enjoyed his stuff that much, and uh, then I started reading up on him, and I watched a couple of documentaries on him. And he was uh, he's uh, an icon in American literature, and I never knew it. I always think of uh, Hemingway and uh, various other authors that that I really enjoy. But he uh, is an icon. He's uh, one of the greats. And my buddy said, listen, you write just like him. You know, I was like, wow, okay, cool. And then when I learned who he was and what he had accomplished, I was like, wow, well, that's fantastic. I, I, I could only dream of getting as much uh, work out as he did. I, I don't think that's ever going to happen. But when I read his books, I saw the similarities. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, and the thing is about short stories is you can go in, you can take a little quick 10-minute dump, and uh, you can maybe you can bang out a story, or maybe you can read a couple of pages of them. But, you know, like I, I'm reading a book right now, it's called The Frontline. It's about the journalist who started the uh, Frontline organization that they presented their uh, video uh, and photos to various media outlets, sold them. And everything that they went to, went through to get started, and uh, how they did business, and uh, what what they had to go through to get all the the uh, the content. And while I enjoy the book quite a bit, uh, it's been very slow reading because you know usually I only read it when I'm on the crapper. It's probably a little bit 
more information than you need to know. But anyway, let me get into what I want to get into. So here's the deal. I, you know, I haven't told anybody about this, and some of you may know what uh, I'm talking about. But uh, some of you might not. Now, I'm not a big fan of aeration. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not receiving anything for what I'm about to tell you. I'm definitely not. They're not giving me shit. And uh, I will never be, uh, I don't care how much they give me, I'm not going to be somebody who uh, plugs AirAsia. I'm not, I'm not necessarily trying to plug them, but they have such a deal that for people who are trying to save a, a, a buck and quite a bit more, uh, they have a way that you can, that a lot of people don't know about that you can save quite a bit of cash. And I've only told one person, it was my buddy, and I actually did a, a, a video with him. His name was Scott, and he was an IT guy. I did a video with him, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago. And uh, he's been on the show, so to speak. Uh, and he was surprised uh, because he, he uh, used what I'm about to tell you to go to uh, Cambodia, and he saved quite a bit of money. Now, here's the deal. I did a quick look. To compare, and I, I'll give you an example. This uh, imaginary trip that I was going to go on is from Bangkok to Ho Chi Minh City. Now, uh, if you just buy a ticket to Ho Chi Minh City, the ticket's going to cost you about forty six hundred and seventy baht, and then if you reserve, uh, you reserve two mid-priced seats. These are not the, uh, the best seats in the airplane, which, <laughs> to be honest, any time that I ever used them, I always bought the best seats because I always wanted to be where I wanted to sit, which was somewhere that I get in and out very quickly and that nobody is going to be banging into me all the time. Uh, anyway, so the, the mid-priced seats are like 400 baht each, so each way. So if you factor that in and then you... Uh, the price of the ticket was 4670 baht. Now, obviously, these are going to change at different times, but I did compare using the same dates. It was 4670 baht. You factor in the 800 baht for the seats. I'm not even going to say that you're going to pay for food uh, or any other little you know, gadgets or gizmos they're trying to sell you. And then they charge you 3% for if you pay with the ATM card. Now, you don't have to pay with that. You can go into 7-Eleven or whatever here in, in Thailand, or wherever the city is, as long as there's an area of Asia there. Uh, you can, there are certain locations that you can go and pay. But we'll just say you pay with a credit card. So the total price um, is forty six seventy plus 800 plus 3%. Now, if you get a hotel room, and I picked a, a mid-priced, uh, actually a rather low-priced hotel that had a good rating, it was three stars, and the name of the place, in, it was in Ho Chi Minh City, was Hoang, Huang Le Hotel. H-O-A-N-G-L-E Hotel. That, that uh, place was about 800 baht a night. Okay? So 1,600 baht. Now, 1,600 baht, um, uh, 1,600 baht, uh, you're looking at uh, about 7,200 baht total. If you add the 1,600 plus the 800 plus the 4,670 plus the 3%, you're talking about 7,200 baht, okay? Now, if you go to AirAsia and you simply go to their website, and on their website you will see at the top page, at the top of the page it will say flights, hotels, Flight and hotel, car. Okay, this is on the left side of their page. Uh, now, if you just want to, you just want the flights. Well, that's that's what the price worked out to. So seventy two hundred baht. Now, if you go to flight and hotel, it will bring up. Uh, you're gonna have to put in the dates and everything. It will it will bring up a list of hotels in Ho Chi Minh City. Now. Here's where you save. You pick out your hotel. Now, in this case, I used the same hotel so I get an accurate uh, comparison. So I went to the Hoang Le Hotel, and the price of the airfare 
was three that with the hotel for two nights was three thousand three hundred and four baht. Plus, you got to pay the three percent. However, we're going to add in the mid-priced seat reservations, which are four hundred baht each. So that's four thousand one hundred baht. Okay, four thousand one hundred and four. Three percent of that. I'm going to say it's 146. So uh, that makes, uh, what did I say here? 800 to 4104, 146. Okay, so 4,200 baht. Now, so if you go to flights and hotel on Air Asia and you reserve your flight and your hotel and you pay for it online, the cost would be 4,200 baht to go to Ho Chi Minh City from Bangkok. Round trip. If you purchase the flight and the, and the uh, hotel separately, I priced the ticket uh, on AirAsia and I priced the uh, hotel on Agoda.com. Then you're going to pay 7,200 baht. So instead of paying 7,200 baht, you can pay 4,200 baht and get a hotel room. You save 3,000 baht. It's almost $100 on a total of uh, what is uh, about $200. So if you do it separately, it's going to cost you about 200 bucks. Um, and if you do it with where you purchase the flight and the hotel at the same time, you're going to pay like, it's, it's about $120. So, you're saving 80 bucks, which is huge. I mean, it's not a huge amount of money, but when you consider that uh, you're saving 80 bucks, which is a huge percentage of what the total cost is, um, it, it really works out as, as, a good, as a good deal. So a lot of people don't know about that. And if you're trying to save a buck and, you know, you don't want to listen to me and say that, you know, Air Asia is a, a piece of shit airline, which I don't, I don't like them. But they're a fucking budget airline who cut, tries to cut corners and uh, who, you know, uh, they, they uh, ream you for just about anything that you can. Every time that I have ever flown on them, pretty much every time, I refuse to check in any baggage. First of all, I don't trust them. I don't know, but they're going to be able to uh, deliver my baggage. Uh, and I feel more comfortable carrying this stuff on me. Now, uh, and, and usually what I did was uh, I only used them for short trips. I've never went anywhere that was uh, far away on Air Asia. I haven't flown to Australia on Air Asia or Japan or anything like that. Usually, and uh, it doesn't matter if I fly on Bangkok Air or Air Asia, I mean, to be completely honest, I, I, if I'm going on a short trip, like to Cambodia, to Laos, to Myanmar, well, maybe not Myanmar, it depends on how long I'm staying in the place, but if I'm only staying for, say, uh, two or three nights, I bring a camera, maybe two cameras, preferably uh, one small of, the, of my smaller cameras, one of my uh, mid-sized uh, SLRs or DSLRs, and maybe I bring the GoPro, okay? And then I bring, uh, you know, I wear my clothes, and I'll bring maybe uh, two pairs of underwear, uh, a couple pairs of socks, um, a couple T-shirts, and maybe one pair of shorts. So, and, and I'll, I'll have the shoes that are on me, and then that's it. I carry one bag. And I carry that onto the plane because I don't want to have to deal with luggage and I like to travel light. So for me, that works well. Now, if you are flying on AirAsia and you want to save money, then you don't want to check in any baggage because they fucking charge you. They charge you to eat. So, you know, I mean, uh, bring a little orange on, on board or something or bring a granola bar, whatever it is. Protein bar, power bar, whatever it is. Bring something for yourself, a bag of uh, peanuts. But it is very helpful for people, especially when they're trying to do a visa run or something like that. All right. Anyway, that's all I got. Uh, until next time, I'm Scott. I'm an American in Bangkok. What else do I got to say? 
โชคดีและเจอกันใหม่